telling you, this didn't work well at all. Our Galaxy S5 charged once on it, and then it wouldn't charge again. This wireless charger overheated my Samsung S6 and totally discharged my battery. The pad got really hot. I was afraid it might catch on fire. I spent two hours trying to find the so-called sweet spot and still couldn't get my phone to charge at all. Why is it so hard to position the device for optimal charging? Wireless chargers have an effective charging area where the coils are located. As long as the charging coils of the device being charged stay within the center of the effective area, the device can charge. Most wireless chargers currently on the market have either one, two, or three charging coils. The more coils there are, the larger the effective charging area is, and the easier it is to position the device for optimal charging. Why would the charger stop working after a few uses? This would indicate a problem with the integrated chip in the charger. If the chip is defective, it would be unable to control the voltage and cause the charger to stop working. Why would a phone not charge with a case on? Currently, most wireless chargers have an effective range of between 5mm and 8mm above the charging surface. If the device being charged has a case that is thicker than this, it would affect charging strength. Why does it charge so slowly? The charger's voltage may not be stable. As the transmission distance increases, voltage decreases and the current decreases, making it charge slowly. Why would the charger heat up during charging? It is normal for the charger to warm up slightly during charging due to the heat generated by electromagnetic induction. Excess heat might be an indicator of high resistance resistors that some factories use as a cost-saving measure. What kind of transmitter would have high efficiency and low heat give off? Number one, a thick transmitter with well-designed dissipation would give off less heat. Number two, a power unit with reduced resistance of the MOS can reduce heat give off. Number three, a circuit board with a larger surface area would allow more heat to dissipate via the conduction strips and lead to less heat being felt on the surface of the transmitter. And number four, if the circuit is designed with temperature compensation, it would automatically adjust as the temperature rises. If the circuit is designed with temperature sensing and resettable fuses, it can automatically stop charging when temperature gets too high. Our research and analysis shows that the wireless chargers currently on the market have varied levels of quality and stability. How can you select a good quality wireless charger that fits your needs? First, find a charger with a conversion efficiency of 70% or above. Second, keep the device being charged close to the charging surface within 5 mm. Third, if the charger has a power output between 2 watts and 5 watts and a conversion efficiency of 70%, the temperature is usually controlled at around 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It should be warm to the touch but not too hot. And fourth, wireless chargers that have a built-in magnetic shield have better efficiency, lower temperature, and less electromagnetic radiation.